I'm Steve Brusati. I'm a paleontologist and professor at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland. And we are very excited about this new fossil discovery. It's the skeleton of a pterosaur. So one of those pterodactyls, those reptiles that were flying around back when the dinosaurs were living. Pterosaurs are fascinating. They're the largest flying vertebrates uh, and first vertebrates to ever hit the skies. All pterosaurs soared above the warm waters of Scotland and uh, fed on fishes and squids. That's why it has enormous, uh, well-defined uh, teeth and fangs. It's a new species. We call it Yark Skianach. That's a Scottish Gaelic name, and that pays homage to where it was found here in Scotland on the Isle of Skye. Scotland back then was a very different environment. It was much warmer and humid. It was almost tropical. Think uh, Canary Islands or something like that. The waters were shallow, swimming with enormous dolphin-like ichthyosauruses and filled with squids and ammonites. The lands were swarming with meat-eating dinosaurs similar to Tyrannosaurus rex, but much smaller, and plated stegosauruses and long-necked sauropods, so variety of animals, you know, from your dinosaur textbooks. It's an exquisite skeleton. The bones are preserved in three dimensions. It's 170 million years old, give or take, and it's big. This animal had a wingspan of over 2.5 meters. That is generally the size of the largest birds today. So already, way back in the Jurassic period, these pterosaurs were getting much larger than we used to think. One of the most interesting things about this skeleton is that when we looked inside the bones at the growth marks, we actually found that it wasn't fully grown. This was a subadult animal, and it still had the capacity to get much larger before it perished. We discovered the fossil in 2017 on an expedition that we did to the Isle of Skye. It was a University of Edinburgh expedition funded by National Geographic. And one of our students, Amelia Penny, she found the fossil out at a site on the coast at low tide. She saw the jawbones basically sticking out of the rock. And we realized as we started to cut this bone out of the rock using diamond tip saws that that head led to a skeleton. We had to battle the tides to collect it. We almost lost the fossil. We had to, to, to let it go, to let the tide lap over it. And we had to worry for several hours, come back nearly at midnight to collect it. And thankfully it was still there. And then for the last five years or so, we've been studying it here at the University of Edinburgh.